Business is messy and unpredictable. Sometimes lonely. So lonely. So lonely. (laughs) And inspiration can often come from really weird places. We pick up where the bullet point blogs and the highlight reels leave off. We start with the stories. Welcome back to So Here's My Story. I'm Jody. I'm Elliot. And I would like to turn your attention to our Facebook group. Um, if you haven't already gone and joined, please uh, get about that because we have some exciting conversations we want to have there. And it's it'd be really, it'd be like if we have a party and nobody comes. So. Right, it was so depressing. <laughs> um, we try, it's funny, we, we on the in the last episode, we tried to make it easier to find the Facebook group since, you know, if you're in Facebook, you can just search for SHMS podcast community, which is still a perfectly viable way to find it. Um, so I, I created a bit.ly link to make it easier, but then it is the easier. It, is it just easier. doesn't sound easier. It doesn't sound easier, which is, which is the, the tricky thing. Like if this was in print, it would be a lot easier to follow. Um, and it is a challenge with the podcast because people are listening when they're driving, when they're, you know, doing right. all sorts of things. So, um, in my attempt to make it easier, I'm not sure it's that much easier, but, but here it is. It's bit.ly, um, which you're probably already familiar with, but if not, it's bit.ly forward slash. And then here's the part where it's unfortunate. I have to spell this S H M S group. So, um, S H M S for, of course. So here's my story. It, it, um, it actually is easier. It just sounds like a four digit speed dial code for nine one one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Did you just make that up? Yeah, that was, well, huh. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's more like a 14 digit digit. <laughs> yeah, you know what well. it reminds me of? So, uh, oh, you know what? That's a stupid story. I'm not even going to tell that story. Never mind. Forget it. Okay. I'm sure we have better stories than that one. We probably... Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we go on to sponsors, yes. did you check Arkansas? Because oh, I didn't check Arkansas. Flat. I forgot to check. Oh, God. No. I, would it be rude if I just like peeked on my phone? Okay. No. no okay. No, no. So, so let's just say this. In case you haven't heard, we are a little like tweaked about the fact that while we're in more than 50 countries, we are not quite in all 50 states because of one holdout state. Arkansas. Arkansas. Ar- damn it, Arkansas. So we are on a mad push, if for no other reason, so that we can stop thinking about it. Um, and it won't kill us every time we look at our podcast stats graphic that shows this big glowing white Arkansas as a zero. Yes. Um, it drives me crazy. So we are on a mad push to to find her. And, and if that person joins and then posts, uh, you know, downloads, listens, posts in the Facebook group that we have our first Arkansas listener A, that Arkansas listener will receive our So Here's My Story whiskey glasses. Yes. And we will mention them and talk about them on our next podcast. And not to mention receive uh, our everlasting gratitude. Well, yeah, that's the best of all of them. And actually, and and I would like to extend that. If you are the person who connects us with our first Arkansas listener, you too will be mentioned and receive glasses. We are all about connection. As long as we know about you, but you have to either email us or connect on the Facebook group or whatever. So take credit. Absolutely. I have to want, like, I, I am, I'm quite certain that this does not matter to other people as much as it does to us, but it is my hope that we'll just, they just will so badly want us to stop talking about it. <laughs> they, they will make it happen. <laughs> That's that literally <laughs> describes how I spent my childhood as a younger brother getting my way oh, because I, because I was hoping my sister would literally pray that I would stop talking about something and let me have my way. So. Oh, interesting. I was an oldest sibling. So, oh. hmm. Yeah. We should do a whole episode on like, there's a lot like, to dive into there. Yeah. My husband and I are both o- oldest siblings. And speaking of childhood, by the way, this is a flash to it. Uh, what I think is going to be another episode. We talked briefly about the first time we ever got in trouble in school and how that was an indication of our lives to come. Oh, we're totally coming back to that we one. We're totally for sure, coming back for sure. to that. But before we do, because yeah. um, and before we hit the sponsors, the really important thing about the Facebook group is we have a poll there right now that we would love your feedback on. It's we're considering adding video um, in addition to the audio of the podcast of also video recordings, but we don't know if anyone's even interested in that. So just a very quick like, yes, please. No, thank you. Don't really care. That's about the extent of the poll. So if you could pop into that group while you're there, join the group because we're going to be having some cool conversations. But even if you just pop in and vote in the poll, that would be great. So that's it. Okay. Shall we move on to our sponsor? We shall. So we'd like to um, send out a a shout out and thank you to Tom Loveland at Mind Over Machines, Cat's Copy, the architecture firm of GWWO, and Mary Craft Staffing and HR Solutions. Thank you so much as always. Cool. As for this week's theme, we're actually going to roll off of last episode yes. where, um, cause right at the end of that episode, we were kind of verging over into a different topic related, but different about 
being understood and all the things that play into that. And I think you have a story, right? I do. It's something that I do habitually. So I'll just, I'll just go into it. So here's my story. <laughs> Each January, I make it a point to have conversations with the people in my firm about the upcoming year. But it's not, oh, we want to increase client retention. We want to increase profits, and whatever also, my goals are. I'm just knowing you, I'm making this no. guess, so I could be wrong. But you also don't mean like January's performance review. No, like, it's, okay. it's absolutely not performance review or anything like that. The conversation is really um, directed toward... Well, I'll just, I'll just tell you what the opening question is. And that is, we're sitting here on January 2nd. What are we going to look like when we have a conversation on December 30th? How are you going to be um, different, if at all? I know 365 days or so will have passed. You certainly will do a lot of work together. Um, and you learn things along the way. But what do you want to look back on as having made you different. And it doesn't have to be work related. Well, I took these continuing ed courses or I, um, I learned this other discipline in law, but I just like to focus and I'm very, very interested in how are you going to use the year? So to give you an example, a couple oh, okay. years yeah. ago, I, um, decided that, well, this year I was going to take improv classes. So I did that. Um, and that, which was incredible for me for a variety of reasons. I didn't think it would have anything to do with business, but it turned out to be totally related to business. <laughs> Wait, so you, we, you did something unrelated and related it back to business? Yeah. You know what? We should do That's like a so odd. We should do a podcast oh about that. That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it never happens. Um, but but the, the interesting part of the conversations that I have, and, and I'm thinking of one in particular that I had this year with a, one of our new employees who's uh, just came on board with us. She's 23 years old. This is, I don't know if it's her first serious job, but it's certainly the first one in this profession. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was asking her, how do you want to change over the next year? What do you want to experience? What what new initiative is there? And she gave me the most common answer that I get, which is, I don't know. And she wasn't being it to be rude, saying it to be rude or dismissive. She literally didn't know. And what I've learned in in having a professional lifetime's worth of these discussions is that I can almost guarantee that people are going to say, I don't know. I can almost guarantee that the first time you have that conversation with somebody, it's going to result in a failure. It's an, it's a non-start because they literally don't know. And so I always know that I'm going to have at least four and maybe six, seven, eight of those same conversations. Cause eventually on conversation four or five or six, et cetera, the I don't know turns to, well, I mean, this might sound stupid, but hmm. dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and it's not stupid. And it's it's something that, that comes, I think, because you've crossed this, this bridge from, is he just asking because that's what he likes to ask, to, well, okay, if you really want to know, <laughs> here it is, I'll tell you. And those oh, are the best conversations to have, but you got to keep plugging away at it. So that's the story that I have, which is yeah. I started the process and we're in January and I'm coming up. I know on my second and third conversations with some of these people and I'm guaranteed to fail. Yeah. But the fourth might oh work. Oh my God. So you like, um, we might need like four episodes to cover all the things that I just jotted <laughs> I can down. See you that I, writing I'm like and drawing madly and writing. All that stuff, yeah. Um, I'm going to touch on a couple of those and we can, we, I probably won't list all the things that I wanted to mention. Um, but it was okay. Let's see how I want to organize this. First of all, the very last thing you said, I think is, is one of the most profound, but easily overlooked things, which is, you know, you said, cause one thing you were hitting on was the, just the, the fact that sometimes you have to ask people things in different ways in order to get into, I, I, I yeah. it feels to me it's very similar to like, like both my kids and my husband and I all have different differently, but equally uh, deep learning issues like, you know, and so my kids go to a school for people who have language based learning issues. And I always think about the fact that, you know, they are kids 
with whom you can't always just walk through the front door of learning like every other mm-hmm. kid. And the school that they go to is just really good about like sort of walking around the house, like tapping on different windows, like trying to bet this other door, like maybe I could climb up over here and go in this window. And eventually they get into the room that they need to get into, but you have to go different ways. And people are like that as I facilitate and we can come back to this, but it's, it's not the most distinct thing I want to get to here. Um, I have, I am constantly thinking of different ways to ask the same question because some of some of them land and some of them don't. And, it's, yeah. you know, so there's a commitment to the communication of getting to the answer of the question that you're wanting. Cause, cause what it sounds to me like what you're really at the, the base of it, you're asking fundamentally, you're wanting to know what matters to you, like what, what you actually care about and what would be meaningful to you. And, and you have to ask that in different ways. And I have some feedback on, or not feedback, but I can throw in some, some strategies on that. But the thing you got to at the very end, um, so that there's the, how you get into the different, different rooms of somebody's house. There's the commitment to it being a continued conversation versus just a, well, I asked them what they wanted and they didn't know. So it's not my job anymore. There's, there's that piece. But then you said the fourth or fifth time, it might just be not be because they didn't know it's there's, there's something it, it, it's not surprising to me that you said, and they might say, this might sound really stupid, but yeah. that to me actually feels like the most important thing and everywhere we might go with this conversation, not just tactics of how to get somebody to tell you what they want, but the trust that you have to have. Because here's the thing. I'd written down this word like want shame. A lot of times the things people really want, they're almost embarrassed to say it's it's a vulnerable thing sometimes it's an extremely vulnerable thing yeah Yeah. to say like this is what i would really this is what i would really want and it right i'm not just gonna give that up to anybody who asks me the first time what what do you want and sometimes you you might think you're not entitled to it i want to be one of the greatest speakers in the country but how do you say that because you're like you who do you think you who are you who are you to be that person or or that it sounds like it's super indulgent like it's um like what i I can't like you you can't look like that it has to look this other way it's but those are the things that um yeah i'd love to spend this time we have here talking about the 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 things you have to do and and the um the the person you have to be if you want to be trusted with people's truth about their wants. And, but before we even go to what that is, I think that's actually a place where there's a fork in the road of, are you actually someone who wants to be trusted with their real truth? Cause it sounds like a leading question. It sounds like the answer is, well, of course I want, I really want to know whether, but I have, to, I think it's worth asking because I'm not sure that that's always the case. Well, and it's not always the case. You're right. It's not always the case that you should want to. So if, If you know that an answer that you're going to get is likely to be something that not only can't you help with, but you don't want to help with. Yeah. You don't want to facilitate this because they're, you know, even taking it down to business, they're in this slot. Mm -hmm. And what you really don't want is for them to say, you know what, what I really want is to be executive vice president in charge of X. And you know what? You don't want them to be executive vice president in charge of X. You don't want them to be on that path. You want them to stay in this slot. Right. Then don't ask the question. Well, yeah, yes, exactly. Because I, I think that it's if you, <laughs> I think a, a real litmus test for it is if you're asking them what they want and you have an answer that you're hoping that they will say or that you won't be satisfied. Like if you're not, if you cannot find it to be genuinely curious, then then maybe don't ask. Because there's something. Um, it's really interesting. There's a company called Blessing White that I may or may not have mentioned on I think in other episodes. Um, that has this this engagement model and it's 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 this, it's an x it's a big x and one of the sides of the x or the whatever not side but whatever one part of the x is company contribution and the other side is personal satisfaction and the engagement model is that when somebody is both contributing like maximum contribution to the company and maximum personal satisfaction which which includes both like inside and outside you know part of personal satisfaction might be I have flexibility to pick up my kid if I need to. You know, right. like it's not just specific. It doesn't mean you're responsible for their entire life's personal satisfaction. Nor, nor should you aspire to be. <laughs> right, right. But um, but that crossover is is part of what it sounds like you are 
even without knowing that model exists, like that's what you're looking for. Like, what do you want in the world? Like what, how can we contribute here? Like what's important to you? What do you care about? Yeah. And, and they have this really easy, like three question thing. I can, we will definitely post a link to it. It's just how to, how to be talking to people both about their company contribution as well as their personal satisfaction and then also how those two come together as three different kinds of conversations you can be having with your people to to have those and that they should there should be a distinct company contribution a distinct personal satisfaction and then a distinct like the two the two together and it lays it out really nicely so we'll, we'll stick that in there but but that's when one of the things that's important because I'm betting in having the conversation and the desire to actually get to an answer I'm betting that more often than not, there is something in their answer that can be that that I can use as a way to enrich their experience with my firm. Mm -hmm. And if I enrich their experience with my firm, then I then I dramatically increase their desire to stay and contribute. That's that's my whole Absolutely. rationale for it. Yep. But I believe that I can. So, and I believe that in those conversations, the real ones, I can say, oh. You really like doing this stuff. Well, you know what? There's a little bit of this in this activity, but I didn't know that you would even be interested. Yep. Um, but it is part, you know, I kind of talked about improv a little bit. It is part of the improv rule of yes and. Absolutely. If you get their response, um, part of the obligation that you've created for yourself in continuing to pursue that response is yes and. Absolutely. Because I, I, I work with you know, I have people I work with all the time who are afraid to ask a question because they can think of answers they don't want to hear and therefore they don't want to have the conversation. And yet it's as if they imagine that that disconnect goes away if they don't have the conversation. And and you know, back to that blessing white model, it's, it's like if you have somebody who is a high contributor, high contribution, right. but low personal satisfaction, mm. those are the people that you that are at risk because uh, they break down the whole square that ends up in this quadrant of where a, where you could be at high or low of either the one things. And, you know, high contribution, but low satisfaction is people who burn out or or worse. And I love this expression, people who quit but stay <laughs> yes and either way they leave a great space by not being fully there yeah and well then they slide down to uh low contribution and low satisfaction those are the people who you know probably shouldn't be there whereas you could have it's so interesting you could have somebody who's who's high satisfaction and low contribution but that might just be because they're new you know so it, it really mm -hmm. sort of plays out the whole interesting kind of finding where people are and how you move them there but to me, I want to I want to come back to um, a couple things that when you were telling the story about originally, just you ask somebody what they want, and they'll often say, "I don't know." And and there are a couple things just that that I would like to just kind of throw in from the facilitation and coaching side of it is, you know, one thing if you really if you have decided that you are you really do want to understand what people want, um, that it really does matter to you. One thing to consider is that some people are processors and they need a few minutes to think about something. Like you, you ask them a question and they, they don't know off the bat and they're not going to. They need time to think about something. And if somebody often doesn't know, it may be like I like to end things with, you know, I want to ask you this stuff. And and then you can say even and if you don't know right now, like think about it a little bit. Let's let's touch base in a week or something. Sometimes there are people who just need to process before they can. So like if I'm facilitating a group, a lot of times I'll say, I'm going to give everybody, you know, 60 seconds or two minutes, jot down your thoughts on this. And then we're going to go around the table and hear at least, at least one thing for every person. We may go around a couple of times. We'll see just to give people a minute to, my husband's a processor and I am not, I'm the opposite. If I'm sitting there at the table, every thought that comes to mind comes <laughs> like racing out of my mouth. And in fact, <laughs> In fact, back when, back when I worked in, in the corporate world, um, I had a, a colleague say to me with much love after a big group meeting one time, he said, you know, Jody, not everybody has to hear every thought you have. <laughs> <laughs> Like noted, I will consider that. Did you? Um, is that when you decided to become a podcaster? <laughs> no, long, long, long before. Uh, okay. See, but that, but perfect example though. Like I do well in places where I can share my thoughts. Like yes. I'm a terrible interrupter, but that works fine with us. Yep. In other environments, it would be a disaster, and I would be getting talked to all the time. I mean, every single report card I ever had as a child said, you know. 
great kid, works hard, talks too much, talks too much. Well, you know what? Now I can talk all I want, damn it. Correct. <laughs> yes, you can. So, um, so there's that. But th there is also this really important thing about how you ask the question, um, which I think could be a fun part of this. Like if you say what matters to you, it's a little bit like if somebody says, like if you ask me a blank slate question of any kind, like what kind of food do you want? I, like where should we go for dinner? I'm like, uh, my mind just goes blank. Um, and for a lot of people, big, op big open-ended questions are, are really hard. So I am always looking for interesting ways to, I think of it as creating contrast. So, because the brain needs contrast to decide. So you could simply ask it the other way, which is, you know, what do you hope is what do you hope's different at the end of the year? Or, or what do you hope is not happening? Like sometimes people can't tell you what they want, but they, the way their brain works, they can tell you a lot in great detail what they don't want. No, and, and there are a couple of things on that. So one of them is in terms of the way to ask the question, what I struggle with is that I don't want it to be loaded. So for example, yeah. if I say, what do you want to be better at? Or what do you want not to happen? People will automatically think because I'm asking the question at work, you know, and mm -hmm. I, we have a work relationship that they have to answer with the work skill. I want to be better at doing legal research. I want to, and, but that's not what I'm asking. The other part of it is that you're exactly right. What I've found is that the negative is so easy. So even if you're coming up with a mission statement for your retail store and you say, well, what do you want the mission statement to be if you're of the kind that needs a mission statement, which is another discussion, but, yeah. and people don't know, but you say, okay, well, why don't we take a moment to list everything you hate about retail experiences you've had? Yeah. And then people can do that so easily. Yeah. And then you say, okay, let's do the opposite of that. Yeah. No, 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 exactly. Because you're not going to write the mission statement and again, but, but this is the perfect example. You and I can say, I don't like mission statements. Right. I, I can't exactly put words to what I what I would suggest in its place, but I can exactly tell you what I don't like about them mm -hmm. and, and why I don't want that. So I'm not against a sentence or two that actually gives you uh, direction. Like if there could be a, st a North Star statement, I'm, I might be okay with it, but I just don't like there. I don't have to tell you what I don't like about the mission statements. The point being <laughs> that um, I think the sort of like negative people want to be positive about things and the negative side gets a good rap, but it is far more concrete and you have a far more sense of, I think, of what works and what doesn't. Um, and you, so you often can articulate that. And then from that, you have a clear picture of like, okay, so it, it needs to look like this maybe, and it might not be exact, but I think you start to tease out some of the, um, some, some of the things I, another way I try to do it is getting really like making the example super dramatic. It's, it's like, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Like, I mean, take something as simple as a pricing conversation. Like, well, okay, well, what, you know, what price does it start to feel like you'd be resentful if, if you charge that for that? Oh, well, if it was anything less than, mm, I'd be, I'd be pissed. I'd be, I'd be cranky about delivering it. Okay. What, what, what price actually starts to feel like you'd be embarrassed that somebody was paying you that much or, <laughs> or you'd feel such a, such a weight to, to deliver something amazing that you'd probably do a terrible job. Well, that's here. Okay. Well, somewhere between those two things, right. like you go to the sort of the extremes of something and it, you can find out the reason I get excited about this. Cause it may not have, I don't think we've really, really touched on this, but um, it's, it's this concept. And I've, 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 been playing around with this in my head a lot lately, but this concept of being understood is, mm. um, it's just a word and it's, it's a word that I don't even think comes with a lot of weight a lot of times. Like, yes, I understand. I do this, but I, I've been thinking a lot lately about how until someone feels understood and it, and to be very clear, I do not mean agreed with just, I understand where you're coming from. I get that perspective you would have from that perspective. Um, until someone feels understood, I have this theory that they cannot hear you. If you're trying to convince them of something or something, they, until they don't have these like sort of like defenses sparking that like, oh, you don't, you don't get me. You don't, you, you don't understand what I'm trying to say until that calms down. You, you can't really get to the, the marrow of any problem or opportunity. You, you know, it's interesting because I had a conversation like this when I was a kid. My mom and I used to watch Star Trek, the mm -hmm. original. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to talk about this because every once in a while, 
the Enterprise crew would run into a race of people that was telepathic. Mm -hmm. And so we started talking about the nature of telepathy because the way it was portrayed was, of course, whatever I'm thinking, the words that I've formulated are going to uh, come into your brain without my having used my vocal cords mm -hmm. to express it. Mm -hmm. And I remember my mother saying, that's not telepathy. That's closer to ventriloquism. <laughs> the telepathy is not if the words are just imprinted in your brain. Telepathy means that whatever you meant is mm. understood and absorbed by the person on the other side. Yeah. There's a difference between telepathy and just hearing. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love that. I love that. It's it's so true because, it, I mean, you can feel it. I, I think anyone who's married totally gets this because it doesn't even have to be some big complicated thing. It's like you, you're you explaining something and the person's like, oh, yeah. I, I think it's it's why people are so irritated when somebody starts to answer something before you finished your thought because mm -hmm. you, you're like, I, I didn't even tell you the thing yet. Um, and it certainly happens with my kids and with my you know, work situations and whatnot. But there's just this thing about and, and why I love that you do this, because it, it seems to me like what you are trying to do is understand the people. Like you start yes. these conversations because you want to understand them. You want to understand what lights them up. You want to understand what shuts them down. You want to understand. I want to understand the filter through which they view their experience yeah. as positive, negative, the same, mundane. Because yeah. that's where sa that's the wellspring of satisfaction. Yes. And I, it's, it's one of those things I, I've often wished, you know, you, it'd be great if you could hit print on somebody and they, you know, out would come this little report that says, you know, if you have an issue with me, I prefer you just tell me directly and don't be yeah. in the bush or, or if you have an issue with me, I prefer you give it to me in writing so that I can think about it and process it before we have to talk about it. You know, like, it'd be great if there was like this, like the care and feeding of Jody Hume. Um, <laughs> But it doesn't work that way. And because of that, we're all like stabbing around at like trying to trying to be understood and trying to understand. But um, but but it is a phrase that I've actually ended up using in a number of situations, which is is um, actually it's a really funny thing because I did not say it this way. But one of my clients said, um, it's like you said to me last session, uh, last session, seek first to understand. And I was like, wow, I can guarantee you that's not how I said it, but that sounds so good. Like, it was either Jody Hume or Confucius who once said. <laughs> yeah, but, but it is what we were talking about because she was, she was talking about it. I won't say it's the opposite of the conversations you had, but she was wanting, she was preparing herself to go have a conversation with someone about something that she was dissatisfied with in their performance. And she had this whole thing listed out with this, like, it was just, it was just all the reasons that, that, you know, and all the suppositions and all that. And I said, you know, I don't, I don't like, before you go into all that, just be curious, like yeah. go in and seek to understand what's going on. It doesn't mean you have to be satisfied with the behavior. You can be really clear about the outcome, but, but stop short of making guesses about why their behavior is that way. Just seek. Seek first to understand. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, as we have to wrap up, this is actually in concrete terms. This is one of the most successful techniques I've learned in negotiating a contract. And that is because the legal profession, by and large, has moved from being communicators to being people who mm. will write so that you can read what's right. written, right. but you don't communicate the thoughts so that... The opposite of that telepathy that we were just talking about is exchanging red line drafts back and forth and you have all these <laughs> verbiage, all this verbiage and all this legalese. Yeah. And so the most effective thing that I found in negotiating is I will have a conversation with the other side, particularly not just the lawyers, but the principals on the other side. And I'll say, OK, forget about the legalese. Tell me a story. What are you afraid of? Mm. What's keeping you up at night about this? What's, um, if you, what is this language trying to protect you against? What do you see? Yeah. Yeah. And in that way, by asking the question in a different way, mm -hmm. we can get to an understanding of, oh, now I understand what's keeping you up at night. Okay. Right. We can craft language to protect you from that. But here's what I was worried about in the original, which is not what you meant at all. Yeah. yeah. So, oh my God. Yes, exactly. That's the best way to do it. And I found it to be remarkably effective. Well, because then you actually have a document that protects the people from the thing they're afraid of and not just this blanket trying to cover every scenario of right. everything of everything, which I can just see getting, that's why I'd make terrible lawyer because I'm like, really? Do I have to do it? But, but to that, one last thought, um, because as we said earlier, 
because I get to talk here um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> all I do. want. Um, you are able to do that because there are, we talked earlier about creating that sense of trust where someone will answer what they want yeah. truthfully. Mm -hmm. um, some, and the way we were talking about it then, we were talking about that taking time you know, and we may, I would love to do a whole other episode on this. It's not just about time. There are things you can do in a moment with a total stranger to create that sense of trust, but without mm -hmm. it, without them feeling like you are interested in, like I said before, being under, like understanding them without judgment. Like it has to be like, whatever you want, you want, they will not tell you. And if you can't get that part, the rest of it just doesn't make sense. It's, it's not even not. worth it. Right. So that's our story. But the discussion doesn't have to end here. No, it does not. In fact, we don't want it to. No, we don't. <laughs> that is why we actually have our private Facebook group. Which we started to make sure that we could get your comments, your rants, your thoughts. Your stories. Your stories. You can find links to that group as well as show notes and links to subscribe via email and how to find us just about anywhere you can possibly find podcasts at SoHere'sMyStory.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at SHMS Podcast. And since we know it takes a village. Yes, it does. <laughs> we'd like to thank our village, our super talented, incredibly patient team. And occasionally snarky Ooh, team. Yeah, but in the best of ways. In the best Lovingly of ways. Snarky. Yes. <laughs> Good mockery. So, so a huge shout out to the people who actually help us produce our show. Uh, first, our sound engineer, Tom Hansen. Thanks to Christy Schmier for our brilliant show notes and all the other fantastic writing she does for us. And to Taylor Mathauer for doing just a little bit of everything. Including wrangling us. Including wrangling us. <laughs> Which is no small feat. No, it's not. This is Jody Hume. And I'm Elliot Wagenheim. And you've been listening to So Here's My Story. 